Hey Mancavians, this is Bob from the Bob Zenscale Man Cave and today is part 9 of how to install a 130 foot turntable and roundhouse by Walters. And this is the final episode, I promise, because I have finally finished this roundhouse. To the point of um, saying, well, I want to put some decorations or some other accoutrements on the inside, it's pretty much finished. So let's go take a look. Well, as we start this project, or finish it actually, we're going to put in the rear walls first. There's a ledge windowsill at the bottom of each window, and that denotes the bottom of where this panel is going to go. On the top, we got these little notches. Those go on the inside of uh, each section. Put some glue on the bottom of the wall and up along the sides and put it in place. Hold it there for a few seconds till you're sure it's glued. And we'll start moving on to the second piece. So you want to glue along this edge here, so you can glue the two wall pieces together and to that brace, and also glue across the bottom and the edge, right along that one edge right there, so it pushes up against the bracing and glues to the bracing, just like that. showing that actual gluing where to glue. Just run it up. Try and keep it uh, not too thick, but just enough to make it stick. So I glue across the bottom. And I also glue it along the other edge. snaps on the inside of that little tab that's on the inside of the wall so they line up against it and everything makes it look square and they just do the rest one piece at a time and it's done now on to the doors <clears throat> the doors, you do not want them to be glued in, you want them swinging freely, but you want the frame to be glued in. I painted these red and green beforehand, just use regular tester's paint. You can spray paint them if you want, or however you want to paint your uh, doors. But the frame has got to go in between the wall and up against the edge of the other brace. The glass windows on the inside make a good place to bump up against or bump up against uh, when you're putting them in place and it's uh, fairly straightforward let's try and insert one of these now <coughs> you want to glue along that edge there and put it in the middle now it's a little difficult because you got to put the doors in, the little holes, little pins go up there. Don't get paint on the holes, on the on the, on the pins because it doesn't it makes the hole smaller and make it tighter. So you want to scrape any of that off and insert them into the door frame. You got a left one, a right one. Plus there's um, little notches at the bottom so you know where they go across the track so that'll work <coughs> apply the glue to one of the edges and also up the other beam to glue the other end there and try and wiggle it in there you may have to work a few 
times just trying to get the, the holes to line up just right for the pins in the doors. But once you get it in there, uh, it'll function. Make sure that the doors move before you continue on, otherwise you could have a hard time getting the doors back in after it's dry. Make sure it's all pressed and uh, lined up correctly. And as you can see right here, <coughs> how it lines up against the windows, and so the bracing in between each bay just fits in between the windows. And you try and you know, get them as close as you can. If you don't really have to as long as it fits really and is lined up properly and you just keep continuing on putting the rest of them in the walls and the doors took me about a day a few hours to put them all in now we're doing the windows you have long windows and short windows you know make sure you put the the glass on the back of course and there's a ledge on the bottom and that will go down because that's where the roof pieces will lay up on top of so they don't fall in so put some glue in where the windows will touch and lay them down in there <coughs> of course you can only put the short windows in the short side and away we go putting all these in. You may have to put some bracing in there to uh, keep the braces from bending over and the windows falling in. So, you know, do what you can to keep it uh, still while it dries. Now on to the roof. Uh, the back piece has got exhaust uh, plumes or funnels to suck the steam out of the roundhouse. Uh, you glue those on. I painted all the bottoms black uh, beforehand. I did not touch the tops. I may do that later. But you start putting in the pieces and they should lay right on top of those window ledges and the edges of the beams and the front doors. And you just go around till all of them are in goes pretty fast. After that, you know, you can put on the smokestacks. I decided to put my smokestacks on before I put them all on. You know, by the time you get all the way to the end, it may not fit properly, but, you know, that's okay. Now we go to use, put these uh, wall end caps on, and just glue them on. Pretty simple. There's a really long one that goes in the middle, a little bit shorter one goes on the back, and the shortest one in the front. Just press it in place, simple gluing procedure, and there you have the roundhouse all completed. Final step was I put in this tower for the electrical to go to the turntable on my Walther's 130 foot turntable and it looks pretty good. The last step however is putting some lights in, getting all the lights wired up and ready to be shown. It looks awesome. I've got Woodland Scenics just plug system. All, I've seen all those in previous episodes, gluing them all to all the beams and turn on two switches and I have all the lights lit up. Even put a blinking light in on top of my uh, tower for the machine shop. Looks really neat on the inside. You can adjust the, the volume, so to speak, or the brightness on the little resistor pots on each of the control boxes and for each different area of lights that you want to have. You can turn them down a little bit dimmer if you don't want them bright. Turn them all the way off if you want. And it has a really good effect inside there. 
these are all lit up in full brightness. It really stands out and I'm very proud of it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, project as much as I have and uh, maybe it inspired you to make your own. Well, there you have it, man cavians. That's been part nine of how to build this turntable and roundhouse. I'm finally finished to the point of getting to do some other decorations on it, um, you know, doing more things on the inside if I need to, or putting people in there, and all those other little things you do to make something come more alive. Uh, some of the tricks and traps that I ran into were, well, be careful how you solder, you know, plan things out ahead of time. Um, especially if you're deciding on your framework and the foam. I went with foam on top. Uh, it made it a lot thicker so the plans and the instructions didn't quite work out for securing it. My turntable is not even mounted solid in there. It's just squished down in there and it's nice and tight and snug. And that's all you really need really. The track holds it down because you glued it down to the turntable or over the top of it. And <coughs> paint ahead of time because if you're going to light the inside you don't want light blinding right through the plastic so I've painted a lot of the interior and or the exterior as long as I got a layer of paint on there um, and it's thick enough it's probably going to look alright um, I'll find out more when I put the lights uh, in and powered up but uh, we'll see how that goes so I'm, I'm hoping for the best I may have to do some creative uh, light blocking uh, to make sure that doesn't happen in the future, but we'll see. If I do, I may even cover that, uh, just to give you an update of what I've added. There's a few more things I need to do for the turntable. I want to add in a uh, programming track off the turntable. I'm finally done with this project. It's taken me a few months to do it. You know, life gets in the way. Uh, don't worry about life getting in the way. It's going to happen. I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, I'm going to enjoy my turntable immensely. I've already been playing with it a few, uh, lots of times. Some of the things I would probably change is how you glue down the track inside the turntable or the roundhouse. It seems to keep coming loose with model glue. I may have a problem with that and I may have to do some rework in the future. Oh, also, I think it works better with code 55 versus code 80 rail. So the doors scrape across the top of the track. So <clears throat> that could be a bit of a problem uh, later on. But right now they, they move mostly freely. And uh, that's good enough for me. You guys to have fun. Stay off the tracks. Happy model railroading. All that good stuff. And thank you, Mancavians, for watching this series. Bye. Stay tuned for the next one. The next something or other. I don't know what it is. But stay tuned. So if you like what you saw here today, go ahead and click subscribe down here below. Or follow my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and my Instagram links down here below in the comments. Also click on one of my other links for videos as well. As always Mancavians, happy model railroading, stay off the tracks. Bye.